Yeah, uh, how do you feel like Dante Fowler came out of, what was that, whatever day yesterday was, <laughs> came out of yesterday and in today, it seemed like he did a little bit less than team drills today. What's that? It seemed like he did maybe a little bit less than team drills today than yesterday. Like, how do you feel like he came out? It's good. Again, we're trying to be smart with him. Like, he was uh, ready to go yesterday. Like I said, he's got the fresh legs, you know, these other guys are in week three through camp. But, again, we got a plan to bring them along to make sure as we get through camp, we everybody finds a role, come out of it, and we're ready to go September 12th. And maybe this is just me being new to you. Like when you have a guy in a yellow penny, like Olus has been the last couple days, is that don't hit? Is that he's on? Red we'll keep him out. Yeah, but I mean, again, it's you can put him on there, and if, if I put him in there for a bunch of runs, then shame on me. It's for him. You know, he's out here returning to play. He's, he's dealing with, with something, and to let the guys know, like you get him working seven on seven, you get him working some of the, the passing reps. And to know to, to just tag off them. Maybe I missed this. Jason Spriggs, is there something yeah, he's going just on? resting through something. When we signed Jason, um, that was the deal. You know, he was recovering from an off-season injury he had um, coming out of Chicago last year. So it was a long-term plan, and he's he's a tough guy. And we're just trying to make sure we're we're not he's not having any setbacks. But he should be fine. It'll be a few days of rest. Yes. When uh, um, when uh, we've seen. Um, Dante Fowler, kind of like at his best, he's been a really dynamic presence. Are you excited about the the, the, uh, the potential of getting him going and getting him back to his fine form? No, I'm excited about the potential of our defense and the finding that the best guys are going to rush the passer, and, and we may, you know, it's going to change week to week schematically what we're trying to do. But all those guys, I mean, we'll see who the best four or five guys are, who's up that week, and what our plan of attack is on third down. But uh, it's too early to say right now. I mean, I, I mean, like you get, and, and I'm, I'm happy with what Dante's done. So, but we got a lot of guys that are in there fighting for roles, and he's just one of them. George, there was something that you were talking about yesterday that I thought was very interesting. You're talking about having to get fair evaluations, and mm -hmm. how when you're looking at them, you have to be very objective and, and understand that there is perspective in what you're looking at because. It can change. You know, some guys sure. can be terrible and change. You can't put amazing. Right. right. At what point in your career did that really sink in for you? I don't remember exactly when. It just kind of over the years. Um, and then in, it really, in going into 2019, it's just something I believed in. And just even the way that you go through a preseason game, because different situations come up. I mean, you hope that the game's even so, so you can stay in rhythm and you get the best you can, apples to apples comparisons with this, with whatever you're calling, you know, you got to see the big picture. And I've been around a lot of different staffs and thankfully I'm positioned now I can make some of those decisions where keep perspective of what the preseason is. You know, if you go out there and you want to show everything, you want to out scheme everybody, that's your prerogative. But, uh, you know, if you got a battle in there at guard, you, you need to call the same stuff. So see them actually do the job. Otherwise you're just, okay, one guy gets the first half, things are close. And you call a certain kind of plays. And then you get down the second half, and you're you know, calling a, a different set of plays. You're down. You're throwing the ball over the yard. It's not, it's not a fair evaluation. So, and then mixing and matching, making sure, like in practice, OK, this guy's playing guard. Make sure he gets to go against Grady. So you, you're trying to, to constantly ev evaluate that. And uh, it's never going to be perfect, but you got to put the big picture in perspective. Um, that was said the thing. You're try trying to win the press conferences trying to win games during the season. And the same thing with the preseason. We want to go out and play well, and we want to win. But you also got to understand there's a bigger objective as we go through the, uh, the entire camp. Miles, I'm back. Yeah. Coach, uh, how confident are you in uh, Drew Dahlman's ability right now to step in and you know, sort of play maybe two different positions right now, whether you know, the injury happens or if you just maybe outright wins in general? Well, it's kind of a subjective turn. Look, if, if he's one of the guys up, whether he – eventually, you know, earns a starting job or he's one of the eight guys up, we better be confident or we got the wrong guys dressed on game day. So that's what's fair to the team. Um, but so far, again, like all rookies, they're going to they're gonna go through struggles. Uh, but pleased with what Drew's done, we're throwing at him. It hasn't been perfect, but happy with how he's progressing. And with the guys sort of, you know, moving around on the offensive line right now, Caleb coming back again. Sure. Him moving around like that. How is the sort of the chemistry that you've noticed on the line? And it's just way too early to say. You know, it's just, it's just that's what the situation is. Uh, you start camp if you've got injuries, 
you know, some years you may have five experienced guys, but you don't want to get complacent there. You want to, it's a, it's a fine line of making sure you've got, you know, the five guys that had enough reps together, but then you, then the flip side of it, if you're dealing with injuries or you got guys coming back that are maybe uh, different spots, you know, coming off PUP, um, it's, that's life in the NFL some years where every week this guy's down. Okay. Who's playing left guard. Okay. Can we have a backup center? So those are all trying to problem solve as we're going along too. So that's kind of where we're at. Coach, are you uh, at all surprised? Maybe not surprised the wrong word because you scouted him right here as a, as, an, as a free agent. But Mike Davis, his versatility to be able to bounce outside, run pass routes. I mean, he screwed one a couple of. I mean, you're, you're going against uh, Deion Jones, one of the best cover linebackers in the league, and he beat him a couple times clean. Are you surprised? Is it really good? I'm not sure surprised. Um, and it, and it helps, you know, when you're putting together a staff and you've got guys that have been in other spots. We've got guys that have worked with them before. Right? Uh, Charles and, and Dave Ragone have been with them before. Uh, we, you know, we scout them. You like what you see on film. You know people that have worked with them, coached them, maybe recruited them, and understand the role that right now, if he can do more, we're going to use him that way. So, but again, it, it does definitely helps having guys on your staff that have worked with free agents before. This is going to be a weird question, but sure. uh, like your hat, your pullover, like, do you have like tradition, like superstitions or track or something like that? Like, you're first year, so, you know. Yeah, year, no, I don't think anybody's uh, buying a ticket come, to come look at me on the sidelines. So I don't have that kind of ego. I and mean, a lot of it's just practicality. Um, you know, that I, I do have more stuff in the, in the locker, um, but it's just kind of it's getting a rhythm, you know. Wore that yesterday or the walkthrough and it's grabbed the next thing. I did notice that, uh, and I'll, I'll tell Braves when I see him, he's wearing the same thing every day. It's starting to get yellow. So we, Joey and the equipment guys down there, Hoss, need to get him a new new uh, pullover. No, I'm just saying, some, some guys are like very particular about their hats. Some guys are like, you know, that's what's your I mean, I, there are certain things, yeah, sure, <laughs> I, that I like, that I'm comfortable with. But it's not like I don't think I'm sweet and, and awesome. Um, you know, I don't spend an hour like Matt LaFour does looking in the mirror before he runs out there. So you can tell Matt I said that. <laughs> Both of them. I mean, you know, you hope. Look at this way. Grady's done a good job, but Grady's continue. I mean, every year you got to prove yourself in the NFL. And Chris, same with him. I mean, it's a good battle. You, you hope to have quality starters like those guys going. It only, it's only going to make them better. It's going to make our team better. Um, and they've done a nice job. It's a healthy respect. You can see that. That's what you want. Both those guys work extremely hard. Both of them are tough guys. Um, but it is fun to watch them compete. Uh, yes, uh, I, I wasn't taking a shot at you when I said before. <laughs> so, oh, good. so. Uh, we were talking with Cam. He said he spent nights like he spent the off season kind of training with a young way, and everybody talks about distance and hang time being important aspects of the job, but also get the hold. Right? Yes. Can you talk a little about that? And sure. That aspect and how important that is to determine who kicks for you guys. Yeah, it's just it's that's another factor. I mean, and you're and you're right. It's one that gets overlooked a lot, but it is important. Uh, those guys, you know, I know couple years stretch there when I was in Tennessee you could tell with Bo Brinkley and Brett Kern and Suckup you know they had a good rhythm going there so yeah it it, it all it does matter and it's a big factor into it now if you're a great holder and you know your your hang time's two and a half seconds and yeah we got other issues but chemistry's there especially the specialists you know it's a unique cult I, I forgot to mention yesterday young ways arms are definitely bigger than suck ups too so and, and as far as hang time do you have a preference I mean it's a combination of both it just depends, you know, it takes into account, right? You know, obviously, uh, this, where we play at Mercedes-Benz, you know, you should get pretty good weather at least nine times. I guess you're saying 10 now, you get nine home games in 22, and you're only playing one in the, in the uh, are they calling it out the Caesars Superdome? Yeah. So, nine or 10 games, you know for sure you're going to be indoor. Um, and what are you doing? You know, if you're going to get into the big directional punting game, or you got a guy that can go up there and put it up there and with a lot of hang time. So, you take it all into consideration. Yeah, great guy to talk to about that, Steve Hoffman. Steve, Steve's like, uh, and I mean, I, I'm not in all sincerity. Uh, Hoff's been around the kicking game a long time in this league, and he, he's a great historian of the kicking game. That'd be a great question. Let's get him to talk to Hoff. I'm serious. Do you 
Appreciate it. Thank you.